This is a program that discusses issues of faith for people looking for answers. This is Viewpoint with Bob Placey. Gun control in the Second Amendment is a major topic in today's news, and should it also be a topic from the pulpit of our churches? Well, today's guest is a pastor, is Walt Shepard, and he says yes, it should be. He also holds a Bible study in a local gun shop in Ohio, which is probably one of the more unusual Bible studies going on in this part of Ohio right now. I would say it's quite rare, that's how long, for sure. How long have you been there? About five years. Five uh, we years. started with four guys, and uh, it just kind of grew through the years, and we, we run about 60, 65 guys to come out, and yeah. it, uh, it's a great, great group of guys to come out. It's a how blessing. Did, how did you happen to start a Bible study in a gun shop? Well, the owner of the gun store uh, approached me. Uh, he's, a, he's a believer, and he wanted to uh, do something with his gun store to uh, glorify God, mm -hmm. and uh, so we just kind of uh, started talking and found out that uh, we agreed on a lot of issues. Aren't there a lot, not just people, but a lot of Christians that go, whoa, you can't be teaching, it's a gun shop. You can't be, yeah, that's amazing. you there, can't be mixing gods and God and guns. It is amazing. It's a, there's a, uh, a pacifist attitude that mm -hmm. uh, Christians shouldn't talk about guns. And, and, uh, but when you look at the scripture and, uh, and look at the, not only Old and New Testament, but put it all together, uh, there is a mandate, a biblical right. I mean, we have a Second Amendment right as, a, as an American citizen, but we do have, as Christians, a biblical right uh, to keep and bear arms. But, uh, but do I, I mean, as a Christian, do I have a right to self-defense? Do I have a right to, to defend my family, or is it a responsibility? Well, well, the, well, the Lord Jesus Christ said, and he says in Luke 11, and, he, and I'll quote it in verse 21, when a strong man armed keepeth his palace, his goods are in peace. And so when someone's armed uh, in a defensive position, uh, the goods are in peace. Mm -hmm. uh, his family's in peace. His children are in peace. His, uh, his uh, resources are in peace. But the very next verse says, But when he's stronger than he shall come upon him and overcome him, he taketh from him all his armor. And then it says and he, that he trusted and divideth his spoils. And so here's one that uses the, um, the, uh, the carrying of a sword for offensive. And he's taking peace. Mm -hmm. One that's uh, keeping peace is uh, defensive uh, to, uh, to keep his goods and his palace, if you would, in peace. So one is designed to keep, one is designed to take. So Jesus is very clear and, uh, that it's okay to defend your home against someone that would want to take from you peace. Now, did, 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 did people say, well, well, do not murder, do not kill, turn the other cheek. Did Jesus ever really say, arm yourself? Yes, he did, actually. When the, uh, <laughs> uh, over there in the, in the gospel, uh, you, you'll find that uh, Peter uh, was carrying actually two swords, mm -hmm. and this is right before uh, the crucifixion. And, uh, and, and he, he, he makes a, a statement in Luke 22. Uh, he says, and he said unto them, verse 35, uh, When I sent you without purse and script and shoes, ye lacked anything. And they said nothing. Then here's what he said. Then said he unto them, But now he that hath a purse, what's that? That's your money, your wallet. Mm -hmm. He says, and uh, uh, let him take it. So take your money with you. Then he says, and likewise is script. What is the script? That's the scripture. You can take your Bible with you. But then he says, and he that hath no sword, let him sell his garment and buy one. And so uh, the Lord is pretty clear here. Yeah. If you don't have a, a sword, let me put it in our language. You don't have a gun? Mm -hmm. Go sell some garments and, and purchase a gun. Uh, for I say unto you, as written, yet ye accomplish in me. And it talks about the crucifixion, talks about the purpose of why he came. But we have a sin-cursed world, and it is clear, not only as it said in Old Testament, but the Lord Jesus Christ says, if you don't have one, go ahead and get one. Purchase one. And what I like, like about that scripture is I was look, looking at that in preparation for you and I, your, our conversation, is that afterwards the, the apostle said, yes, we have two here. Mm -hmm. and, and Jesus says, well, that's enough, it's enough. because it's, it's a defensive situation. They weren't going out to conquer the world right. and to force people into converting to Christ by, by carrying a sword. They were, it was a def defensive purpose. So two swords was plenty. Absolutely. And, you know, there's an old saying, uh, when, when guns are outlawed, only the outlaws will have guns. Absolutely. And so uh, yeah, there's, a, there's, a, there's a great story in the Old Testament about the Philistines. Uh, when, G when, when David was coming on to be uh, the king of Israel, uh, the Philistines were uh, basically arraying themselves to come in and attack Judah. And, uh, and he said to Judah, and he, he was uh, concerned about them because they were very peace-loving people, but he wanted them to be trained in the most advanced weaponry to mankind, and that was the bow. 
And, uh, and so he was, if you would, putting a, a mandate out there nationally to have some good defense. Why is that? Because the Philistines wanted to attack. Uh, also, another story is the Philistines were uh, uh, was told that, uh, that they, there was no smiths found in Israel. Uh, that would be like this in our time. There would be no gunsmiths. Mm -hmm. And so the smiths were designed, they were, they were there to, to make the swords. Make the swords sure. And so they were going to come in and attack Israel again. And so the Israelites, uh, they took the pitchforks, they took their knives, they took their pruning, they took their, their garden tools, and they went down into the Philistine camp, and they took files, and they started sharpening their files and their, and their, their hoes and their garden tools in front of the Philistines. And it wasn't for the purpose of uh, being offensive with their weaponry, but to avoid a, a conflict with the Philistines. So uh, the, the point that was, is being made is that weapons... Uh, are, um, are something that God is allowing us to have for the purpose of defense and uh, defending our homes, defending the innocent, defending our, our heritage. Uh, and it's okay. Uh, I, I, my, my point, I think, I think a, lot of, a lot of churches have backed away from this and they're following a false narrative uh, that is driven mostly by, by a left media that says these guns are horrible. And they're, they're, yeah, they're picking out the gun in this case. Uh, and I ask you a question, uh, how did Cain slay, slay Abel? God didn't really care how he did it. He didn't, he didn't name a weapon. He didn't say, well, he did it with a rock. I, I always thought it was a rock. Mm -hmm. I see this picture of Cain coming down sure. on Abel with a rock. Sure. Some people said it was a stick. I don't know, it kicked him in the head. But God didn't care about the weapon. He cared about the responsibility, of that, that personal responsibility. And it was an offensive attack. Yes. Uh, a lot of people say, okay, I'll, I'll give you that. If you want to have a, a handgun in your home, have one, but how many guns does anyone need, and why do we need uh, ARs, which are not assault weapons, but armor light rifles? Why, why do we need why do we need those things? And the answer is we don't. It's not a need. It's it's a right. It's a right. It's a, how it's many guns does does a home need? Yeah. Well, I mean, uh, well, for at least Peter, uh, two were were enough two for him. Two were good. Uh, but uh, you know, I would say again, going back to the uh, uh, the, the the liberal media that tries to paint an, an assault, uh, when I'll use their, their term, assault rifle, AR-15 uh, or AR-10, whatever it is, mm -hmm. that has a, you know, a, a high capacity magazine, and then call them weapons of war. So let's go back to the, the, yes. the, the, the Constitution. If you go back to the Second Amendment, and it's interesting, I'll read it, a well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state. So they would say that, hey, why do you need these AR-15s? Go get a, a little 22, go get a 4570, and go deer hunting. The founding fathers weren't concerned about being overrun by deer. Right. They're being. This is a militia, well-regulated militia. Mm -hmm. They, and they uh, just they just been in a in a war with a with a dominating government. Absolutely. And you know this uh, this is this should not be infringed. And so any movement against this right should not be infringed. And so I, I always listen to uh, little key words like uh, weapons of or phrases, weapons mm -hmm. of war, uh, or uh, or those uh, those things that try to steer the mindset of our culture away from this right. Sure. So it is a biblical right. It, I mean, we can go from Genesis all the way to the book, uh, all the way through the Gospels, and we can make a pretty good biblical case that it's okay for us to carry for a defensive purpose. But we also have a, I believe, a, a God-given document. God gave us that Constitution, and that Constitution very clearly states, that shall not be infringed. That is a right that we have. And preachers ought to preach uh, 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 for this and, and inform their people that it's okay. There's nothing wrong with that weapon. Uh, and <laughs> another interesting thought is our young people ought to be taught how. To handle well, they used to. There used to, there used to be rifle clubs in high schools, and 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 uh, 4-H taught uh, marksmanship, and those. But anymore, that's culturally so such a an anathema that, that they can't teach it anymore. No, I know. But there there are those gun clubs. But how do other pastors respond to this and when when they see you in teaching in the gun shop, or when they when they hear your rhetoric or your 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 message about they're uncomfortable uh, there's some that are uncomfortable some are saying i i like what you're doing but my association and my church and my my, my church members uh they wouldn't they wouldn't be behind this uh and i i would say to them that if you just take and graciously teach the bible and uh and we're not uh we're not uh this very 
strange group of uh, of four percent people that run to the hills and are an anti-government. I'm listen. I'm for the government. I'm just for small government. So we're 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 on the same page. But there's also a personal responsibility, and I think the, the uh, our current culture kind of emasculates men. We're, we've got a responsibility, not just a right, but it's a re God's holding us responsible for that. Yeah, uh, you'll find uh, throughout the scriptures that uh, the Lord uh, wants us to quit. The, the, the King James says, "Quit ye like men." In other words, be brave. Mm -hmm. uh, our country should be run, and uh, we should have we should have a. Uh, uh, again, I, and I call it a feminization of the of the manhood in America, but it's 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 affecting uh, the the thought process of our culture, to where if you carry a gun or if you like a gun or if you want an AR-15, uh, you are an ogre, you are a, a chauvinist, and and they, there's another whole uh, there's an, another whole political argument that uh, that comes from that uh, that kind of thinking. Uh, I would say this, our country and how it was founded and how it was preserved and what it was given to us uh, with uh, was, was built largely by a, a people that feared, this, feared God and loved this book. Uh, and, and I remember uh, as a little boy, I would watch John Wayne movies. I would, uh, I, I, I would stay up in those days, back in the 70s, uh, they had, we had a little black and white TV <laughs> and I just, I couldn't wait to join the military. I was, I was, I was so, even as a little boy, I, said, I can't wait to get in the military, can't wait to get in the military. And, uh, and I, I, I proudly served my country as an infantryman. Uh, but uh, but uh, our, our country has drifted far uh, from what our founding fathers were. And, uh, and I know this, that if we continue down this road and if they continue to move uh, a legislation through our courts that are taking our guns away from us or infringing that right, uh, we'll be no different than Turkey, uh, which, by the way, in 1911, they established gun control. Uh, and so from 1915 to 1917, 1 1.5 million Armenians yes. were unable to defend, defend themselves, themselves against a tyrannical government. Soviet Union, 1929. Armenian uh, Holocaust. That's exactly, and people don't talk about yeah. the Armenian Holocaust, but that started largely from a 1911 gun, gun control, control legislation. Right. Right. Well, wait, to get back to the, the whole thing of, of guns and having one in your house, do we have the right even up to lethal force? When you look at the, the, the Ten Commandments and it says, do not kill, thou shalt not kill. How do you, how do you interpret that? Uh, well, it's not, thou shalt not kill is the wording there in the understanding. Even Hebrews will tell you that's thou shalt not murder. murder. It's, not, it's not an offensive, premeditated attempt to take someone's life or shed innocent mm -hmm. blood. And so, again, proving the case of a, a defensive use of a weapon, mm -hmm. not an offensive use, but a defensive use outside of war, because there's times you have to be offensive right. in wartime. But outside of that per parameter, uh, uh, the biblical use of what the Bible would call a sword is permittable in a defensive right. situation. Well, it, it, and, it, and it is murder. I, I hear it misquoted a lot as thou shalt not kill. But later on in those same scriptures, it says, if a man sheds man's blood, by men his, his blood should be shed. The, mm -hmm. the things like capital punishment are, are right there. The, Correct. It's not a killing. It's, it's, it's the, the mandate is against murder. Right, right. And so I, I just think the churches, if, uh, if the people of God uh, could, uh, could not, uh, not, be, uh, not be taught and steered by the culture, go back to the Bible, look at the biblical right, and there's several principles you can look at uh, from, from Genesis chapter 13 all the way through, and you can see how God feels about uh, people carrying weapons for the purpose of defense. He knows we live in a fallen world. Yes. And he knows there's evil out there. And, then, and the evildoers are going to take advantage if, if uh, strong men don't stand up. Correct. Strong men and women, in Correct. this case, don't, don't stand up. That's right. That's right. And I think the sin cursed <laughs> world, uh, the culture, the Bible says in 2 Timothy chapter 3, that perilous times shall come. That means it's going to get worse. And when the end is closer, the, 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 the society continues to deteriorate. And, and as we get into those days, they're dangerous days, they're perilous times. And so during those perilous times, we ought to be people that would take the armor of God, God's word, and spiritually engage in the spiritual enemy, but have a, a physical uh, weapon that would help you guard against physical enemies that would attack your home and family. If you'd like more information about Jesus Christ or how to connect to a local church, go to our website or Facebook page. We have a lot more resources there that we can connect you with. Plus, I'd like to hear from you.